Robots are now operating fast food restaurants. That's right, there's a McDonald's in Fort Worth, Texas that no longer requires any human interaction for you to order or pick up your food. No more flop sweat when cashiers judge you for not knowing what you want to order. No more saying you too when they say enjoy your meal and reliving that cringe for the rest of your life. So you know this had to be my next stop because I had to see for myself if it's all it's cracked up to be. Hello internet, welcome to Food Theory on the Road, a first of its kind series where I hit the road to see what theories I may find. In case you missed the first episode, let me catch you up. I'm moving from Los Angeles, California to Miami, Florida because I can't put my 80 pound beast of a dog in one of those cute little bags and carry him with me on a plane. And he's not a good enough actor to dress up as an old lady like Shaggy and Scooby did in the live action movie. But I decided to use this golden opportunity to finally knock some to-dos off my theory bucket list. And if you want to see what other things are on that list, you might want to click that little subscribe button down there to see what's up next week. This week though, it means I'm checking out the world's first robot operated McDonald's. Now I've seen headlines for months about this thing. And truth be told, this was actually an episode that Matt had his eye on, but we could never figure out the travel and the timing. Enter Food Theory on the Road. If you're not familiar with the cutting edge location, the big draw here is that you as the customer don't have to deal with any human interaction. If you order online or through the app, you can just pull up to a window and your bag will come out to you in a cool elevator slash conveyor belt thing. You can also order in person by using the kiosks that are pretty much available in every other location at this point and just picking up your order from the window when it's ready. So I decided I'd put these robots to the test to see how far from the apocalypse we are and if they really are the future of fast food. Because you know what they say, if a robot can whip up a burger, it can whip up the destruction of all mankind. I had a whole experiment planned out in order to find if this truly would be the future of fast food. But just like cooking a steak on an engine and so many other experiments I dock myself into doing, seldom if ever do things go as planned. To my surprise, and to my disappointment, that robot operated has a huge asterisk next to it if you ask me, because the only part of the restaurant that is robot operated is the front of house. So it's it's true that there are no employees having to clean up after customers and no one taking your order, but that doesn't mean the place is devoid of human life. There's still plenty of employees in the back who are actually preparing the food. That's right, it's not like Wally is back there frying up the fries and flipping the burgers, it's just regular old Wally. Not to knock Wally, but it's just... <sighs> It's just not the same. Regardless, the choice was made so that the employees could solely focus on the speed and accuracy of the orders since they wouldn't have to deal with bussing tables or anything else that might distract them. So boo, we can't compare humans to robots, but we can compare speed and accuracy to determine if this really will be the next big thing. So we're gonna order the same meals across different McDonald's all over the country. And we're gonna see how they stack up to this one. Five different states, five different human operated McDonald's to compare. In Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, North Carolina, and South Carolina. We'll be ordering two full combo meals. One will be a Big Mac with no modifications, and one will be a Big Mac with extra everything. This will be how we determine the accuracy of the orders, comparing the base burger with the modified one. And we'll measure speed from the moment of payment to handoff. The biggest catch and hurdle here is the fact that the robot operated McDonald's utilizes the self-serve kiosks. In our drive through episode, we discovered that the drawback of the kiosks is the lack of options options you're given. For example, one of the modifications we wanted to try was to remove the middle bun from the Big Mac. Good little hack if you don't want so much bread on your burger, but it's impossible to do that at the kiosk. However, four of the five human operated McDonald's did allow it. Obviously, to level the playing field, we only asked in those locations we didn't order since we couldn't do it at the robot one. So we had to keep our modifications to what the kiosks allowed us to do. With all that said, it was time to get started. It is very cool. You step inside, you don't see any tables, you don't see any employees, you don't see any trash cans, nothing. All you see is a double-sided kiosk and the order pickup window. It's actually kind of eerie, but super cool at the same time. The restaurant really is for people on the go. No tables meant I had to eat it hunched over like a burger gremlin in my car like the fast food gods intended. And I gotta say, it did not take long for me to get my order. And when it came to the food itself, it was actually two of the neatest looking Big Macs I've ever gotten in my many years of fast food but we're not just here for looks, the accuracy of the order was also evident. The base burger was
was seriously lacking in onions and pickles, but the modified one had an obvious increase. The lettuce was a bit harder to judge, but the difference in sauce between the two of them was also huge. Good for me, since I love a good old sloppy mac. Now, the thing to keep in mind here as we to every other state for McDonald's is that unlike last time, we aren't focusing on the errors made, but rather the visual difference between the modified burger and the unchanged burger. Since we're only testing one ordering method, we're more concerned with whether the changes we asked for are actually reflected and, of course, how quickly they get done. Despite not comparing the different locations to each other, there is one thing to call out, and that is the difference between the unchanged burgers. Even though McDonald's has standardized quantities of each ingredient that are supposed to go on each burger, each location's base burger was vastly different from one another. Ironically, when we asked for the modified burger, the extra additions were fairly consistent across the board. So even though it's not part of what we're measuring today, if you want more than a couple of specks of onion or a sad single pickle on your burger, your best bet is to ask for extra. As far as the accuracy of the orders go, the ingredients that stayed the most consistent in the modifications were the onion and lettuce. In the base burger, onions were so few I could probably count them on my fingers, and the modified burgers across the board seemed to have a consistent amount of onions added. The two ingredients that varied the most were the pickles and the Big Mac sauce. In the base burgers, two pickles seemed to be the standard, and a small dollop of sauce. The modified burgers had way more pickles, even though the number changed a lot from location to location. And when it came to the sauce, woo-wee, they threw caution to the wind when I asked for extra. They felt like they were mad at me for asking for more, like, you want extra? I'll show you extra! Blah! And just dumped a pile onto the burger. The question here ended up being less about accuracy and more about variability. Because in our case here, across the locations, the modifications were made, so each location was accurate. But while asking for modifications did increase the quantity of each ingredient in every single case, it was wildly different every time. That said, not every mad lad is gonna be opening their burger to count the individual pieces of onion and pickles. So at the end of the day, so long as more is put on the burger, that's all that matters. And as far as that goes, the robot operated McDonald's didn't seem to do any better than any of the human operated ones. Which leads us to the speed. This is fast food after all. And like I mentioned in the previous episode, I got places to be and I got the need. The need for speed. The robot operated Mickey D's set the bar high. I mentioned I got my order fast earlier. And when I say that, I mean it. From the time I placed my order to the second I picked up the bag, only two minutes and 30 seconds passed. No other location got even close to that number. In fact, only one other location managed to get my order out in under four minutes. And even then, it was in three minutes and 52 seconds. The slowest spot in Oklahoma took five minutes and 13 seconds, over double the amount of time. Granted, we're talking about a couple of minutes here, but when you're hungry, an extra two minutes can seem like an eternity. Taking the average of all the human locations, we end up with four minutes and 44 seconds. So with order accuracy being equal among all of them, the robot McDonald's easily takes the prize here thanks to their speed, but it's not as clean cut as that. Because like I mentioned earlier, the self-serve kiosk not only lacks customization options that are otherwise available if you order with a person at the register, it adds another element that actually slows you down. One thing I will note is that coming in here and actually speaking to someone, it was a lot faster to get my order in. I didn't have to scroll through the kiosk to find the options and do everything I wanted to do. Just being able to tell someone and they know how to put it in correctly was honestly great. While it didn't fully offset the difference in time in most of the scenarios, it was a more pleasurable experience not having to fumble around the touchscreen. Plus, the human element does have its upsides. He also complimented my shirt, so I am absolutely biased. What can I say? I'm a sucker for compliments. But there is something to be said about being able to ask an employee questions about your order, especially if you are looking to modify it in any way. Without someone at the front and with the current state of the kiosks, you as a customer may be missing out on getting your meal exactly how you want it. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how quickly you get your meal if you can't get exactly what you want. But if you're not someone that likes to mess around with your McDonald's meal all that much and you're just looking for a quick fix, the robot operation does make a massive difference in how quickly you can can get your food. And if this location continues to be successful, McDonald's may expand this concept and put more emphasis on the user experience on the kiosks. So the lack of customization now may not be a problem down the road. There's actually one 
other thing that this new era of fast fooddom brings with this concept though, quality of life for the employees. While sure there are less employees needed at a specific location like the one in Fort Worth, they're under far less pressure overall when they don't have to deal with talking with customers. Not only because some people get hangry, but because employees are under a lot of pressure to get orders out in a specific amount of time. That's right, one of the top comments from our previous video actually revealed that employees are timed on their orders, and a little bit more digging showed that yeah, this is actually actually the case. The Golden Arches apparently puts a lot of pressure on employees to get their orders out in three minutes or less. And considering all five human operated locations were almost a minute over that at best and two minutes over that at worst, it means that having to deal with customers definitely slows down their ability to bring out orders. And that's not even talking about employees that have to clean up after that one kid who decided to scarf his meal down a bit too quickly and ends up leaving it all over the floor. Now obviously the big concern here is that robot automation won't just stay in the front of house. In fact, restaurants like White Castle, Chipotle, and Panera have already started implementing burger flipping robots into their respective kitchens. That said, it's been to varying degrees of success. Cali Express by Flippy, the world's first completely automated fast food restaurant in Pasadena, California, is probably the best example of showing that robots aren't quite up to the task just yet. Let me tell you, we've been wanting to try this place out for a long time now, but they'd been plagued with delays, bad reviews, and closures up until their pop up, up and popped out of existence. So as far as the Terminator preparing your burgers and fries, yeah, we're still quite a ways away. But in the meantime, the quote unquote robot operated McDonald's has been enough of a success that another one opened up in Denver, Colorado earlier this year. So this is most likely the future of fast food, going back to its roots of focusing solely on the pick up and go experience. The owners of the locations get to concentrate their workforce on the actual product itself, and the employees can breathe a sigh of relief not having to barely keep their heads above water trying to meet strict timings. And even though in the short term, we won't quite have the same level of customization for our meals, we'll get them in record time to eat them in our cars like the fast food gods intended. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. See you on the road. If you like this, make sure to tune in next week to see which gas station foods you should be snacking on. And as always, I'll see you next week.